Hello, welcome again to another podcast episode on Talk Architecture Podcast. I'm your host, Naziati Muhammad Yaqub. We continue with the topic on the new architecture curriculum, how it works, part 5B. The first part, we explain how a student of architecture would be going through the new architecture curriculum. We discuss and recommended the type of projects and how it will affect the rest of the understanding, how it builds up to um, building up the confidence of the student, building up to the student understanding deeper and deeper about architecture, reading broadly and going deeper into architecture. And strategically, that is how it needs to be backed by or supported by with the collaboration with the tutors. So a certain amount of independence that students need to have because they would need to lead project teams. So we focus on the first year architecture curriculum in five a, so now this is 5B, so we continue with this um, ex- detailed explanation of the program, project by project, and we will look into the how and why of the project that is to be proposed and how the learning objectives is achieved. If you care to listen to the other episodes, you would know about the use of case studies, observation skills, analytical skills, critical thinking, synthesis, and interpretation of the designer, and focus on the design problem to see the complexity, give the understanding of what constitute an architecture design project. We're happy that we had references with the notes on the synthesis of form by Christopher Alexander earlier. Shall we proceed further? Now, just in part 5a, I give a bit of understanding of how the usual um, subjects of materials and construction, environmental physics, um, structures and services are being introduced. You can also add lighting and acoustics and all these other technical or technological and environmental topics that's important nowadays to understand. And when we talk about green building, we go back to basics really uh, on every single of these subjects when we deal with it in the architecture uh, program. History has also been being thought of in the case studies of visiting historical buildings and understanding the case studies which could have influences from Western colonial architecture as well. Anything to do with research is the introduction of methods and methodology in the design studios as well. Yes, cramming in, you would say. Why do you want to cram in all these five years into three years? Well, the thing is, it's not cramming in, you see. It is being efficient and being careful with the learning programs and not making redundant projects. Or you'd want the student to learn something new. The learning is also the pacing. Yes, listen carefully. The learning is also the pacing and the rhythm of learning. And, you know, uh, you execute what you learn. Like a footballer, executing the plan on a football pitch, for example. I'm talking about European football here. So the coach needs to understand the skills of a player and needs to understand that the player actually could execute the plan and actually get a favorable response or an immediate impact on the game. So there is a sense of 
pacing oneself. And the whole idea is that architecture education is an experience. And if it's five years, it takes a long time. Excellent students from O levels or from the foundation courses would opt out, opt for other subjects that would take them three or four years rather than architecture. You'd want those students who are more, shall we say, uh, intelligent or much more smarter to be part of the architecture fraternity at the end. You'd want, you know, you want to pull people into your team. And we are all educators or practic practicing architects that would want younger, uh, agile, you know, people who are interested in architecture and to be designers, not to run away from that and wanting to be in design, as particularly designers to come into architecture. What about UI, UX designers? You know, there are similar um, similarities between UI, UX designers and architectural designers. And it also has to do with functional aspects of the discipline at hand. For example, universal design specialization is more, uh, has been uh, implemented more by UI UX than architects themselves. We have lost the functional game a lot. You know, it becomes too highly specialized. You can reintroduce universal design right into the curriculum at second year. What is universal design? Designing for all, designing for all ages from children to elderly persons and designing for disabled persons because the aging population demands that architectural products and architecture per se, design, anything, is going to respect the fact that you need to be resourceful in architecture and product design out there so that you know, that you won't be wasteful. And this is what climate change is about, not to be wasteful with materials and products anyway. The idea about green building need to expand, <coughs> excuse me, to a more holistic ecological thinking or much more bigger, wider thinking, wider understanding of um, uh, the world and what the world needs. If you're a podcast host or someone wanting to be interviewed on podcasts as a guest, visit podmatch.com. Podmatch automatically connects ideal podcast guests and hosts together for interviews. We always say it works just like a dating app, but instead of connecting you for dates, it connects you for podcast interviews. Podmatch has connected over 85,000 guests and hosts together for interviews that listeners love, all while saving you countless hours of administrative work through built-in automations. If you're ready to level up your podcast interviews on either side of the mic, start today by visiting podmatch.com. So we're not into compartmentalized thinking. We are part of the world and architects have a role to actually engage from the very beginning of inception and conception of the design um, with regard to um, climate change and, you know, understanding the materials and construction and what is the best way to approach a project that minimizes um, waste and could be more adaptable and flexible in use. So there are similarities between um, green objectives and universal, universal design objectives. We can have this sort of project in the second year because this is the second year would be less of the scale uh, human scale and recognizing human scale and less of um, measure, less of uh, um, proportion system. Now the students have actually understood that and they would employ it um, 
in earnest together with new things that they will learn. And what they will learn is about the human nature, the sensibilities of human beings further. And specialization is no more specialization, but it's what you needed to learn in this day and age, looking at environmental sustainable goals or um, social equity and environment um objectives that is put out there and for us to need in a much more architectural way or in a much more tuned to architecture sensibilities. So here we shall see in the second year, I push some of the ideas uh, with regard to second year learning to the first year because the debate is the first year you don't really need to know about art because architecture is the mother of all arts. Architecture will bring you to art. Architecture is art. There is no denying about it, but it's architecture. It's just one of the art uh, ways of looking at art. But it has a function to it. So therefore, in the, in the second year, you have the housing and um, the sense of scale in the first year you'll have, uh, you can go back into much more detailed design in the second year. What are the typologies out there besides housing? You could talk about um, a project which is to do with community. And um, then you'll think about responsibility. The identity of the architect become much more to the society at this time. You expand more on the proportion and order and uh, other sort of uh, sensibilities in terms of design. You'd focus on your drawing skills further. You'd maintain the use of manual drawings or freehand sketching or such like and only use computer-aided or digital architecture at the very last. Now, when we talk about at the very last meeting in the production stage, sorry. But when we talk about artificial intelligence and its use, what are we talking about? I mean, there are podcast episodes that I'm dedicating artificial intelligence and how it's being utilized in architecture, education and practice, obviously. And it's just an onslaught that we cannot deny that's coming to us. And... You know, there's a difference between intelligent study and browsing and clicking on things and trying to figure out how you can use that image in your design. There is two different things that are going on, isn't it? So one would like the student to explain. There is more explanation to be done, obviously, when one talks about the design concept. And if there is artificial intelligence being used, it has to be meaningful and it has to be based on research and it's not a last minute thing, a shortcut that you would want to pass along as yours. We know that for sure because we want pe thinking architects or people who's going to come out of this being confident about the ability of themselves. This is not about imposter syndrome or faking it. This is about you're going to go into the grill or the drill and when you're in 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 um industry and it's going to be hot out there you know sitting on the grill or drill whatever it is and you got to stand on your own you got to think on your feet you got to maneuver yourself out of that so and you know um you'll be found out if you did not really prepare for a graduation. Well, going back to the second year project, I mentioned about uh, certain projects at community buildings um, and buildings that people share um, and, you know, um, to do a specific or specialized building. And I said just now, what are these buildings? Could be things to do with, uh, disabled people or elderly persons or children. Um, we've done the housing and habitat in the first year 
much more intimate to understanding about relating yourself to architecture since, you know, you have lived through houses, you have lived, you know, you haven't gone into like historical buildings yet. So the, the historical buildings component could come in earlier in first year in a much more um, touching on history of architecture, but it could be expanded further in a, the cultural aspects of it. You could give readings for them to actually look into and how that influence their perception on certain things and how they would start their narrative. The voice, the voice is going to be full on. Students of architecture is going to be full on. The voice is going to be really spot on. And, you know, you know that people who are in the industry, they still struggle with talking about, you know, having a voice, having an identity. But here we're trying to get the students of architecture to do it in the second year. Do you know what I mean? Because in the third year is when their voice will ultimately come out from their research from their study on a thesis or a comprehensive design project in which they intimately will go and study a particular subject that is recommended or based on readings. So the readings start in the second year. In the first year, they were given some reading material. These are books on a variety of subjects that is underlyingly to do with liberal arts. It's not, it may not necessarily be architecture subject per se, but you can have the fountainhead, you can have certain architectural uh, books um, given, you know, Jane Jacobs or some very uh, interesting um, architecture books uh, that could be um, helpful to your understanding about architecture. But in the second year, you'd be developing that identity as the architect. Now, you may end up not being an architect. You may go do something else after the third year, but this is a learning program. This is coachable. You need to have coaches with this. So the interest of um, the tutors in the second year, you'd have a more skilled student, and they could go through a process where it's quite personable in terms of their interests. Art in architecture, dignity in architecture, universal design in architecture, green in architecture. I mean, the, the students would be reading around these topics and some research can, can also be done, introducing more to the observation, analytical and critical thinking. Readings can be done in crits or in like a workshop session uh, together with the crits. Um, stage design music schools, you know, uh, institution, um, introduction to institution meaning schools or kindergarten. And yeah, like I said, it's not music school or art school. Um, something to do with interviewing a client. Uh, designing after a client's brief, understanding that there's somebody out there going to give you a set of design requirements that you need to tackle. And um, that's the thing that I'm thinking about, the third year project, whether there need to be a client or very kind of like um, well-guided, but they, have, they are free to express what they want to design in the thesis in the third year. So second year is actually preparing all the skills that they, you know, it is, people would say that second year is going to be like a honeymoon year. That's because you stretch out to five years. Second year is not going to be a honeymoon year. It is a very important year to prepare yourself so that you can play the flowing football or the game that you're going to do in the third year you are going to be much more confident and the design problem could be complicated. It could be an adaptive reuse and also an addition in the second year. And how difficult is that? When you look at one is to 20, one is to 10, that, that new and the old, you can see that 
the students, when they want to go and do a detail of the new and the old, when you cut a section and how the transition from the new and the old, that is very interesting indeed to see it in terms of space, volume and details. Yes, that is what we're working on when the student do their drawings in the second year. That is through a lot of rigorous case studies that they need to be done. And the tutors in the second year really need to work hard to give the guidance. And the last two semesters will be a bit more independent, guided less. But the, first, the intensity is on the first uh, two semesters uh, of second year. Um, so... Here we have writing essays as writing as a form of actually reflecting on architecture, improving the, the command of writing and vice versa would help them with the language, English language, for example, in terms of uh, presenting themselves. We're talking about people who have, are not really fond of the English language, but there is uh, a prerequisite of a certain level of command of English that is necessary before joining this course, obviously. We want to attract the best. That's why it's only three years and not five years of architecture. So when you, you, when you start asking about, oh my God, I mean, fourth and fifth year, you have high-rise buildings, you have the design thesis, the design problem, like I said, I'm giving you adaptive reuse, the new and the old, that is complicated, is for a design detail, volume and space, the sensibilities of that and how they want to refer to case studies that they visited or that they actually have to go and look into the detailed design more carefully. If you were to say like a market, uh, an old and a new, that's, you know, like a an a market building where they have selling of goods and stuff. You cut a section, you have those stalls, and then you have a new stall in the new section. And the air flows and the material and construction, wet and dry spaces. How are you going to start looking into that deeply? So that itself is very complicated, and you actually have that special study in the fifth year doing that. But you can introduce it in the second year because of the case study approach and a lots of sketches, lots of freehand, lots of manual drawing. The demand for the student to show up for every crit is necessary to show up and, you know, to actually get feedback or to be confident of presenting. The demand is high. So what are the design problems? I'm tackling this. I'm tackling the space. I'm tackling the detail. I'm tackling the joints. I'm tackling the a spatial layout for the marketplace of an adaptive reuse building. The in and out, the courtyards and the in-between spaces could be also another thing that a complex building is introduced in the second year. No joke. You're not, you know, you can introduce a five-story building here. Earlier on, you, with what you, you'd rather use uh, it in the third year, for example, you know, you have to actually agree that there are some things that you will learn later when you are in practice. You'll pick up later, like building regulations, because that's the way it is. That's the way the students will, will understand architecture. They are free to actually look into ideas and details and get a grip of being an architect. And slowly, the understanding of the building regulation will come to fore when they are doing the second part, which is a two-year industrial or practical training. This has to change. Architecture education has to change in order to accommodate, in order to attract the, the brains of in society out there to make it a much stronger architecture fraternity. So the three years has to be, has to be working well and everyone is needed to be involved especially the tutors, to embrace this new way of doing. Now, because you th as you said, you're talking about office design, which is like a 10 to 15 story building, you're talking about 
and a housing which is uh, say um, similar uh, high rise. What uh, what are high rise buildings? The replication of the technology, right? The mechanical engineering, right? The replication of the technology and the mechanical engineering aspects. How do you learn advanced uh, construction works? How do you learn that? What really happens in industry and in architectural practice? Right, you you actually actually have to create a space, right? The architect has to create space for it. Understanding the arrangement, this can be done easily in the second year. Even you don't even do have to do it in third year. What you could do in third year as an alternative is to have a very technological uh, design problem embedded in the comprehensive comprehensive design project. But what? What is an advanced okay? What is an advanced uh, construction uh, module? So that is one of the things that that we need to ask. We need to ask why, what, you know, why the learning of a high rise building. Let me put it to you very clearly. Is to do with building services. If you were to tell me that 30% to 50% of accommodation of a building, especially in a complex building, is to do with the mechanical services, where do you actually learn these things the best? In practice, obviously. You could make it a mandatory for the, before getting a license in the practice, to, for the student of architecture to learn what are mechanical uh, and electrical um, requirements of a um, high-rise building. Why do you need to learn in the three years? Because you could have other learning done, other confidence to be, to be built for the student of architecture in the three years. These are questions that we need to ask. Is it necessary? Is it necessary at all to actually learn it in those precious uh, years in the university? The three years architectural training and then the two years of practical training is something that need has need to be agreed with architecture education and the archi and the architecture fraternity of the professional architects. It needs to be a collaboration that this is the way forward for the new architecture curriculum. The comprehensive design project or the mini thesis, when you look at a thesis project in the fifth year, would have the freedom of student to actually visit the site, finding which site to do to identify which is their project. Um, uh, site and also to analyze the site and coming up with a topic. If you use the technique of guiding the student to find the site and the master planning, there's, there could be an urban design and master planning at the beginning. Because a lot of projects in the third year is to do with the urban context. What's the difference between, between the urban context and the urban design? What is the difference between master planning and urban design? So some projects can be worked out together as a group in the third year. In the first seven weeks, when there have been research and guidance to particular areas where they can do a master planning and urban context um, analysis, this will help the student to come up with the sites that each individual student would do in an area. Just say you decided to do a urban regeneration near a port city or a city by the river. There are transitional, um, the need for urban renewal in certain tra trans areas that have a lot of transitional residents going on or abandonment of houses and vacant lands. 
a lot of crimes happening. So certain of these areas could be potential, a wealthy potential of looking into the problems of um, the urban problem. And contexts become much more meaningful when it's to do with about with the people involved and people that are staying in or residents of that area. And interviews and case studies could be done as well together in a group with a group. And then you can run the seven plus 14 weeks, which is 21 weeks of the comprehensive design project, looking into um, first solving the master planning and then in some projects they may have in between spaces between their sites and the other person's sites it could be a campus design some people want to go for whatever they like it is a research as well plus an architectural design studio so you can see the from this part part b uh, sorry, part 5B, you can see how it is linking back to when the student of architecture first stepped into the university and trying to understand human scale and then would be confident enough to be able, with the help of the architecture critique from outside as well, um, giving their feedback and also the strength of the tutors in terms of giving the best learning experience and the project that they have could get the student to be much more confident about um, going into practice. I know the detractors are going to say, look, you're going into practice, you need to deal with the developer because that's the client and the developer wants a certain commercial way of doing. The students are not, are not going to be commercially driven if you don't have commercial driven projects such as the high rise and the housing, for example. That is going to be the detractor's argument with regard to uh, opposing the three year program rather than the five year program. But you're losing out so much, the momentum, the pacing of the learning and getting into practical training right after the third year, going into practical training in a, uh, an office that is, it could be a commercial office. And that is part of the curriculum. The commercial part, if you wish to be going into the developer, market-driven uh, sort of setup, is going to be learned in practice. And the architecture community with the educators and the industry is going to, <clears throat> agree that is the way architecture education is going to be played because you'd want the thinking architect you want the entrepreneurial architect you'd want the traditional architect type i have been going through episodes on this defining the different types of architects previously say 20 years ago we only have one the traditional architect type but now we have many architect types so, yes, that in a nutshell is the a conversational way of trying to explain to you what how it works. This three years of program of architecture degree program from the original five years. This is how it works. In actual fact, what we're doing is the master of architecture is we take out all the um, theory. We're taking out all the things to do with theory, obviously, and um, having to go to a university and we pushed onus for the industry and the architecture fraternity in terms of still the university can give courses on law management and practice, professional practice, one and two and architecture construction management or whatever, and also the laws and courses on laws and legal aspects and the specialized courses. There could be specialized courses on commercial buildings for the two years in practice. Wouldn't that be great? I haven't discussed about that two-year program and I would like to go and make it much more uh, precise. And I will do so. And after this, we will have a special summary of this, but it will be some time before I will have to do the writing of this to put it on paper, to put it in a blog. So bear with me with regard to the new architecture curriculum I beg you to actually understand if you're in the architecture fraternity, 
I actually would love it if you could understand and embrace this whole idea that this could work. And I've shown how it could work and why it needed to work in many, many episodes. So this is a concluding episode on the new architecture curriculum for now. And there will be a summary of it later on with a write-up. So thank you very much for listening thus far. I hope you have a good day. Take care.